any committee organization reports. Go to the cause. Mrs. Shaw. Um, I attended the uh, Garden State Coalition of Schools meeting uh, on September 28th here in East Brunswick. Uh, and shortly after our call to order, uh, we enjoyed the very fine company of Mayor McAvoy, uh, who discussed uh, Board of Education, municipal government cooperations, including public safety and shared services. Um, we later heard from Diana Pasculi, who is the Deputy Chief External Affairs Officer for NJDOE, who uh, was giving a presentation on ESSA, also known as the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is a federal law. And she was explaining to us how it might impact um, individual uh, school districts as well as the state as a whole. Uh, ESSA is an effort to close achievement gaps, uh, an effort to set long-term goals. Uh, we are in the process of developing a plan for implementation in New Jersey, and that plan must be submitted to the federal government by March. Um, some of the topics in the state ESSA plan include accountability, assessment, supporting struggling schools, supporting well-rounded education under Title IV-A, and supporting effective instruction under Title IIA. Um, I wanted to mention that um, there has been some discussion about the responsibility of school board members to do some quote unquote lobbying in Trenton. And I wanted uh, folks in our town to understand that uh, our membership in Garden State Coalition of Schools actually provides for us uh, a paid uh, lobbyist who speaks to the legislature as well as others in the Department of Education. Uh, the president of Garden State Coalition this year is Dr. Jordan Schiff, who is uh, superintendent of schools in Hillsborough Township. Uh, he gave testimony uh, to the Assembly Education Committee, and he was speaking uh, against uh, A4122, um, which will eliminate the use of standardized assessments as a measure of student growth in the evaluation of teachers, principals, vice, and assistant principals. Uh, the effect of this change will eliminate the use of median student growth percentiles to evaluate these educators. I do believe that part of the impetus for um, his uh, testimony was the fact that the State Board of Education um, enacted different percentages at their uh, meeting at the end of August. So pretty much like the day before school started, uh, these, this group went from 10% um, of their evaluation being considered from the results of these assessments up to 30%. So uh, the Garden State spoke against that bill. It still has to be considered by the State Senate. Um, we also had one of our um, members, um, David Adderhold, who is the the superintendent of schools in West Windsor Plainsboro um, was, ha, excuse me, has written the NJ Spotlight op-ed from September 23rd, where he talks to, to some length about the use of the park exam and uh, that it will very shortly be considered the only uh, state assessment that can be used for graduation. Um, he also brought to light in his op-ed article uh, another monumental uh, change that occurred in August at the State uh, Board of Education meeting, and that's regarding uh, teacher preparation. Uh, the State Board of Education officially adopted Ed TPA, which is an assessment created by Stanford University, and it is, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure in many ways there are benefits to this framework, however, what has happened here is that the State Department of Education has basically outsourced the licensure of our student teachers to a third party provider. And the reason for that is that uh, the State 
DOE has awarded the implementation of this Ed TPA to Pearson. And some of you may remember that this is the same company that has the park contract. Um, because uh, the Ed TPA utilizes videotaping of uh, student teachers, there are a number of districts that have grave concerns about having their uh, students being videotaped um, as an ancillary of providing licensing for student teachers. So these are some pretty big cases that are uh, developing in Trenton, and I wanted folks to be aware. Thanks, Mr. Shaw. Any other? Ms. Becker. Uh, the Technology Committee met tonight, and just a couple of quick highlights. The district migration from Novell to Microsoft is 95% complete. And with the completion of Wi-Fi access points at the elementary schools, all current classrooms in the district have Wi-Fi access. And um, kudos to Ed and your entire staff for both of these initiatives. Ed, I'm going to put you on the spot now because I was wondering if you could just uh, talk to the board about the data storage upgrade that's coming um, that you talked to us about tonight and provided some details about that. Yeah, Thank please you. come on up. It's important. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> at our next board meeting, I am submitting a request to purchase uh, an upgrade to our EMC uh, uh, storage area network. It's our main uh, data storage uh, component that we have in the district. Uh, it's basically just a, a lot of hard drives with a lot of disk space that we can uh, enhance our, um, our storage capacity. It will also allow us to take our physical servers and create virtual servers so we can eliminate hardware and create more virtual machines. What does that do for us in English? It gives us more storage space for our data. Okay. It eliminates the need for more physical hardware in our data center. So we save on electric, we save on warranties, maintenance on the current uh, current servers that we have. In Will place. things run faster? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. The disk space, the, di the, the new hard drives will run faster um, <clears throat> They uh, because they're on virtual machines. Virtual machines allow you to allocate resources as needed. So. Um, if we have an application that is requiring more uh, RAM or more hard drive space, it will allocate that dynamically. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. Thank you. I thought that was Thank important you. because it will be coming to us on our next agenda. Yeah, that's Just good, to yeah. hear a little bit, you know, the, the advantages. Yeah, Thank you, Todd. Good idea to point out. Tell us what's going on in the high school. Um, okay, so over the summer I was contacted by a lot of the students asking me what my um, position was on the board and what went on in the board meetings and um, the Clarion, our uh, student newspaper, was kind enough to give us a representation in their newspaper so I brought like one sample um, where they had a small article about me, Papa and our positions on uh, the board and what we do exactly here um, and it was nice so that all the students in EBHS know what exactly the student liaison's role is, and so that they could provide me some feedback that I could bring you guys. Um, speaking of that feedback, uh, last year we had a lot of problems with the after school buses, and um, this year I know a lot of students wanted me to thank the board for um, getting the after school buses there at EBHS, and so now all of us students have a way to get home, even if, if we don't have rides. Um, and I'd like to give a shout out to Dr. Vanilla for starting the uh, Make a Difference um, program in our school. Uh, he got all of us clubs to create these posters and represent how we would make a change and make a difference in our schools and our communities and how we would connect with other students and connect um, with other clubs and make a big difference. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Mrs. Reese. I just wanted to uh, mention the parent university again uh, that uh, Dr. Valeski talked about. It was over at the Joan Magistro Performing Arts Center. And uh, retired special education administrator George Scott spoke. Uh, I, 
I have to say that it was the most useful the talk I've heard in a long time. Uh, he had strategies and resources for raising resilient and healthy kids. And he talked about why resiliency is needed, how it's nurtured, how coping skills help kids, basically to help them deal with stress. So I, I enjoyed it for myself as well. It was, a, it was a good learning experience. And I just wanted to speak highly about Parent University in general. There's a lot more sessions coming up during the year. And it's, we had a good turnout. And so a well worth a while resource to come and attend. All right. Anyone else? Mrs. Lax. OK, so I need to be a parent for a second <clears throat> and tell you I went on the Dallenbacks trip yesterday. <laughs> and the reason I tell you this, for those who know me, know I'm not really a woodsy type person. <laughs> but I have to say, and I grew up in the Dallenbacks woods because I didn't grow up too far from there. Um, I am not a science person. I was the Ipple kid. I did the very poor versions of um, our theater stuff. But I will tell you, I actually said to these science teachers, they made science fun. Um, it was a great trip, and I'm very impressed. You guys are wonderful, and I know Trudy Atkins is in here today, but she went into the middle of the lake to test for one of the things you have to test for in a mm -hmm. kayak. Um, depth. Depth? Depth. <laughs> it was a okay. So you're making fun of me. She's a Westchester graduate. She was <laughs> testing for depth. It was, but it was clarity. That's what it was. Oh. She, she dropped the thing down to see how many meters down they could still have clarity. So, Laura, are you going to go to Fairview? I think I'm going to go to Fairview. Oh my God! I know, right? I know. <laughs> she, You're she, on the Trudy's, record now. Trudy's taking me to shopping. She did not like my choice of shoes, but my, my daughter was in was a good range. But I just, but in all seriousness, it was really a very neat experience because, as I said, not being a sciencey person, these science teachers really made science come alive. And you know, with no disrespect to the science teachers that I had, ladies, um, who certainly did their jobs. These people really did. If there's students that don't like science, I can see why our kids are doing so well in the sciences, because they really did make it a lot of fun. So I just wanted to say that. So kudos to them, because uh, this, this non-woodsy science girl really had a great time. I think you should take the down back test. <laughs> I think I, well, you know what? I remembered it was clarity. <laughs> I understood the depth, but he was, she in, was in, looking for something all, specific. No blow dryers in Fairview. Oh, that's okay. In all fairness, Trudy does a terrific job uh, with those outdoor adventures and bringing science to life in the field. It was she really good. does. It was it good. Was all right. Um, Mr. Philipsek. I'm going to join Lori in being a parent, and I was able to go to back to school night. I got to witness one at uh, Chittick and one at Hammershold, and just one thing that stood out in my mind was that when you get to the seventh grade, I couldn't believe how a lot of things are online now, where the old story of losing your homework, um, I didn't get it from my friend, he didn't give me notes, that's all gone. You need, the teacher tells you, you can go to this website, I downloaded this notes for you, and there's no excuses for not getting the homework done or getting done, and I was so impressed with the idea that everything is really lesson planned, well planned out, and if you're not there for one or two days, you still have all the information you need to get. So It's almost too easy. <laughs> I don't know. I was impressed. Anyone else? All right, well, uh, we do have a need for closed session. And in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act's enumerated exceptions, the board has need to discuss the following in recess. A student matter, EBPSA negotiations update, a legal update, and employee matters. These are more fully described in the closed session resolution included in the printed agenda. The closed session is estimated to be 90 minutes, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and action may be taken. We have a motion to go into closed session. Motion by Dr. Cohen, second, second by Mrs. Becker. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good night, everyone. <laughs>